Lee Cristofaro is batting 305. It's one out with a man on second. He steps into the box, digs in, checks his swing, and looks out to the pitcher. And here comes the pitch. Now we'll focus on the hit with the perspective of energy. Here the baseball has kinetic energy due to its speed and mass. We'll focus on the changes to that quantity of energy during the hit. The ball had even more kinetic energy when it left the pitcher's hand and has lost some along the way, transferring some of that energy to heat as it collided with air molecules flying to home plate. That split-second collision of the ball with the bat causes a basic energy transfer, and that's what the hit is all about. To better understand this collision, let's take away the variable of the moving bat and replace it with a backstop to allow us to focus on just the ball's energy changes. After fighting through the air, the ball arrives at the wall with kinetic energy. The ball deforms, forcing molecules within it to move rapidly, heating it up. So much of its energy has been dissipated as heat. This deforming and the loss of energy to heat show us that this collision isn't perfectly elastic. Scientists use a concept called the coefficient of restitution, or COR, to measure how much energy is lost in a collision. Technically, the COR is the ratio of the velocity of the ball rebounding from a solid surface to its incident velocity. Picture this. A baseball flying at 85 feet per second that strikes a solid wall rebounds with a speed around 48 feet per second. Around 65% of the original energy is turned into non-mechanical energy, or heat during the collision with the wall. So the ball doesn't bounce off the wall with as much speed as it had initially. Now let's change the variables. Let's look at the energy of the bat and hold the ball constant. Kids learn how to bat by hitting off a tee. Okay, Tracy, batter up. The ball sitting on the tee has zero kinetic energy. During the acceleration of the swing, the kinetic energy of the bat increases. At contact, a large amount of the bat's kinetic energy is transferred to the ball. This causes a little deforming of the bat and a lot of deforming of the ball, resulting in both the bat and the ball heating up. The bat holds a lot of kinetic energy during the follow-through. Here's what happens. When all of the kinetic energy stays with the bat... Whoa! Way too much kinetic energy there. Let's stretch, and remember that before scientists identified the concept of energy, Newton would have used his three laws of motion. The bat and ball exert equal but opposite force onto each other throughout the period of impact. For these two forces to be equal, the more massive bat-batter system undergoes a much smaller acceleration, while the less massive baseball experiences drastic acceleration. Now it's time to see what happens to the energy when the ball and the bat are moving towards each other at the same time. Here's where the incoming ball has kinetic energy from the pitch and the bat has kinetic energy from the swing. These two kinetic energies combine to produce a much larger impact force. But remember, the forces that the bat and ball impact each other with are of equal size and opposite direction. They are just much greater in size than they were when we looked at hitting the ball off the tee. So what happens to a ball during all of this? First of all, it compresses to nearly half of its original diameter, while the bat compresses only about 1 25th as much as the ball. The ball and bat now have potential energy stored in them, like a compressed spring. Assuming it's a solid hit, the release of this stored energy may result in a ball leaving the bat at around 110 miles per hour. Think about this. With the bat speed and the velocity of the ball as constants, the only other way to maximize the energy transfer to the ball is to alter the COR of the objects involved in the collision, such as hitting the sweet spot. 
A ball striking the sweet spot will cause minimal vibrations in the bat. Hitters always know when they miss the sweet spot by the sting in their hands. When this happens, a lot of energy is absorbed away from the ball impact so that the ball receives less energy. Some players have tried batting with a so-called corked bat. A hole drilled in the end of the bat reduces its mass and hopes to increase the swing speed. Because kinetic energy depends upon mass and velocity, increasing the velocity of the bat at the cost of reducing mass won't significantly affect the kinetic energy of the bat. And the material in that hole, cork, rubber, or some other elastic material, won't significantly alter the COR of the wood. So a cork bat really doesn't give a batter an advantage. It's a lot smarter to choke up, use a lighter bat, or one with a smaller barrel to get around faster for solid contact.